Hello, everybody. Hi. Uh, we um, hope everyone's well. This is our video recorded to help you with your virtual choir recording. As you're all aware, the virtual choirs, county choirs, virtual choir is a project that we're running at the moment, and uh, we'd like as many of you to be involved as, as possible. So the, here we thought would be a good opportunity today to run through a few do's and don'ts so that you can make your recording into something really special. So you should all have by now received an email and the email will give you a link to SoundCloud. SoundCloud is um, free to download. So if you don't already have SoundCloud, you can go on and, and, and hopefully download that. On SoundCloud, you will find a recording of all parts put together so that you can hear what the final song sounds like. You'll also hear a soprano recording, an alto recording, and a baritone recording, which are the parts purely for the, the youth choir, for CCYC. Please note that the baritone part is to be sung by the tenors and the baritones in CCYC. Tenors and basses. And basses, sorry, says Matt, and basses. You'll also hear C, a part that is sung by Alison, and this is only for CGC, CBC, SCS, the Saltash groups. And um, please make sure that when you're listening to each track, that you actually do find the track that you're going to record. I'll just say that again, the youth choir parts are soprano, alto and baritone and the boys and girls choirs are only to record the part that says CGC and CBC. Hopefully that's really clear. Once you've listened to the parts, you can download them, but in order to download them, you need to have your own SoundCloud account. You can go onto it free without an account, you can listen and you can practice to the music and to the different tracks that you need, However, you can't download and keep the tracks on another device. So if you want to do that, you need to set yourselves up with your own SoundCloud account. So with this email you've received, you've obviously clicked onto this link so you can see the film that you're watching now. And as well as that, you'll see the vocal parts, the music and the dots themselves for you to use to rehearse. Next week on Tuesday, there will be online rehearsals via Zoom for members of the youth choir. And you've already been emailed the times for those really important rehearsals. Please attend those Zoom rehearsals if you would like to be involved in this virtual choir project. If you're unsure about the timings, contact Julia, but they start around 10 o'clock and they last for approximately 30 minutes each starting with the tenors and the basses. When you've had the, your rehearsal, Youth Choir, you can then begin to practice the music and start to think about recording it. And Matt's going to tell you about recording it in a moment. For members of Cornwall Girls Choir and Cornwall Boys Choir, your Zoom rehearsal will take place on Wednesday morning, starting at 10 o'clock with Alison. And again, it's really important for those of you who think that you might like to be part of this virtual choir project to please attend this all important Zoom rehearsal. Your scores have also been attached to your email. So to finish off before I hand over to Matt, this email contains your, your music score, download your music score, attend the Zoom rehearsal next week on Tuesday if you're in the youth choir, or on Wednesday, if you're in CBC, CGC, SCS. And don't do any recording until after you've had the Zoom rehearsal on Tuesday or on Wednesday. So over to me for some technical uh, aspects of things now. So what you will need is two devices. 
you will need one device uh, to play the backing track on and you will need a second device to record yourself on. Uh, one of these could be a computer um, and I suggest you choose whichever device is best at recording um, you choose that for doing your recording onto. So some of you might have uh, you know, uh, you know, a parent might have a really good recording setup with a microphone on the computer, or whatever. So, in which case, you can use that. You can use that sort of proper studio setup and uh, and record it like that, even better. But no worries if not, you can equally record it onto a phone or an iPad. Can I can I just ask a question? Because I yes. know some will be thinking. Mm. We're just making an audio recording, aren't we? That should yes. be clear. So it's not a not a film you we, we want from them. No. So let's be very clear. You're just doing an audio recording now, uh, and then we're going to record the video side of things all together um, once we've done the audio recordings. So in addition to the two devices, um, one for playing the backing track and one for recording yourself onto, uh, you will definitely need uh, one of these. You'll need a pair of headphones um, because um, you want to listen to the backing track through the headphones. We don't want to hear any of the backing track uh, on the recording of your voice. We just want your voice on there. So uh, you'll put your headphones on. Um, if you want to, it can be quite helpful to have one slightly off um, so that you can hear the backing track, but also you can hear your voice as well. Um, it's just easier to sing um, um, that way and you might have seen um, people recording in studios, that's how they do it. So um, you're, you're, you're doing a proper recording there if you've got it slightly off your ear. If you don't have a, a big pair of headphones, no worries at all. You can equally use um, a pair of your in-ear headphones and just pop those in uh, and that's fine as well. Okay, so when we're recording these tracks, does it is there a... Is there, does it matter where we record them from? Do we have to be in a certain room, or what do you what what do you want us to do? Yes, so it's it's important really um, where you record. You don't don't just sort of pick up your phone and record it because um, um, that'll make a big difference. The the quality of the recording uh, makes a big difference to things. So, ideally, you're in a room that's got lots of soft furnishings. So so you've got the carpet. You may have got curtains. If you, if there are curtains, you can close them even. Um, so as as much um, sort of soft furnishings in the room to absorb any sort of um, the sound bouncing around too much because we want a nice dry recording of your voice. So yeah, if you can choose choose a room that um, that that not got too many hard surfaces, <laughs> ideally not singing um, sort of into a wall. So you're singing away from a wall, uh, but if your back's to a wall, then ideally it's sort of it's like curtains or clothes, or you can drape a blanket or a duvet or something down behind you just to absorb the sound from bouncing off off that wall. So if I'm using my phone to record, is it okay if I just hold it like this and record? Well, um, it, you do need to know where your microphone is on the phone, uh, for starters. So uh, on a phone, the microphone is 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 there is that little hole just at the bottom there so you want to make sure that's pointing towards you but you don't want to be holding it because um no matter how hard you try um it'll sort of make noises onto the recording that sort of rustling of the phone so you want to put it on something um that's sort of at um face mm -hmm. height so you need to find uh -huh. something it could be a music stand or it could be you know a very tall table i don't know uh, something that you might have around about your your sort of face height <clears throat> uh, and then just make sure it's not too close if it's too close it might distort and it'll sound a bit horrible if it's too far away it'll sort of mm -hmm. bounce around the room too much so you want it a good distance so you know, something like that you know about a foot or two feet away from you um on something on an ipad the microphone is often uh, at the other end so if you're recording onto an ipad then um, there's your iPad like that. The microphone is a little hole at the top there. So can you see the little hole at the top there? So that's the microphone in the iPad there. So obviously on an iPad, you need to make sure that little hole is pointing towards you um, so that you can record yourself well on there. Is it okay to do a few tests? Do you advise that so that they, uh, so that before they actually send it in, they've listened to it and tried to improve with another recording? Is that a good I idea? I would definitely check, you know, do a test recording, maybe not the whole song. So just record maybe the first verse mm -hmm. um, and then listen back to it uh, and see if you maybe need to move mm -hmm. your recording device closer or further away. Or you might hear mm -hmm. that the room's too sort of echoey. So you could maybe... Um, bring in a, a clothes horse with clothes on it or something just to absorb the sound a bit more then um, so um, you can uh, but I, I would certainly appreciate um, you um, 
trying to get as sort of dry and clear a recording as possible, then it makes my job much easier. Easier because um, obviously, if I've got a hundred different um, recordings to edit together, um, if they're all good quality recordings, then it sounds much better. Um, yeah. yeah, lots of things to remember here. I know. Um, we'll be, but there will be a checklist, won't there, Angela? There will. There will, be a, there will, we'll there will. have a checklist in the email as well. <laughs> So you can check through all these things as well to make sure you've, you've got it covered. If you're using the music, um, mm -hmm. then make sure that you're not rustling the pages. So maybe have the, if you've got a music stand, ideal, you can put the music on a music stand and then you can just look at that. Um, uh, so, so make sure we haven't got any rustling of the music while you're, while you're doing things. If you're recording on a phone, make sure you put it in airplane mode. Uh, yeah, so you don't have any pings or notifications going off in the middle of a recording. Mm -hmm. um, so so that, that's a, a useful thing to remember. Um, and also try and just make sure that things are generally quiet around you. So, um, you know, if there's a washing machine going, that's not a good time to record. Um, if there's a window open and there's, and there's people playing out in the garden, then that's, that's not ideal. So, so you're closing windows, closing doors and try and try and get... I know it's sometimes hard, but try and get uh, as quiet as, as possible. So uh, as quiet mm -hmm. a room as possible. So as I've already said, some of you might have, um, you know, have parents um, who, who have got recording software, in which case, great, use that. But if you're using a phone or an iPad, then you can just use the voice, uh, the voice recording things that are already on there. So on an iPhone, um, you've got a voice memo app. Uh, which you can use, and that's that's fine. Um, on your Android devices, uh, there's a voice recorder app, um, so you can use either of those those apps just to record your your voice um, when you're singing and send that in. That's fine. Um, if you can use a computer or you want to use a computer, then Audacity is a free download. Um, that's a, a really good um, bit of recording software, so you can download that and that you, will enable you to record it onto a laptop or a computer. So mm -hmm. lots of different options there. Um, the, other, the other thing that you will have heard on the backing tracks you sing along to is a very strange beginning uh, where you hear my mm -hmm. voice going ready and one, two. <laughs> Three. So you'll have heard that on on all of the backing tracks. Now that's that you know that might have confused some of you when you first listened to it, uh, but basically that's so that we can synchronise all the recordings together nice and easily. So what you need to do um, is you need to say the numbers one, two, and three. So I give you the count in. You listen to the little click going on and listen to me saying it, and you just say one, two, three in time with me yeah okay so so you need to say that so you record it right from the beginning you say the one two three and then you sing along with uh, whoever is singing your part on your backing track there so that's an important bit there and the final thing i think um is how to get the files to me um, just email them okay um, so hopefully um, if they're not too big then you should be able to email them to mdouglasc no not that um, to mdouglasccc <laughs> at gmail.com mm -hmm. so that's where they need to uh, be sent to if they are too big then um, you may be prompted to use google drive um, 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 so you can use google drive or you can use WeTransfer, or you can use dropbox so and they're all free it. they're all free all ways of getting larger files uh, across to someone else so yeah you can use any of those and if you can label it clearly so that it has your name on and your part so, yes, so it would uh, either be soprano, alto, yep. baritone, or CGC, CBC, SCS. Yep, just makes it easier if I've got lots of files going yeah. around, if I can see. So if you've got your name and most importantly, which part it is. So whether it's the soprano, alto, um, baritone, or CBC, CGC. Um, can I just ask you a question, Matt? Because I know some of them will probably want to know this. On the hmm. CGC, C CBC part, Andy sings in part of it. Yes. Should they sing there? No. No, that is merely just to show them when not to sing. So yeah. that is, and that is the, the, the youth choir baritones will be singing at that point. Um, and CBC, CGC just are quiet. Yeah, so it would be best if they've actually got a copy of the music 
so they can follow their line on the music and not just rely purely upon the lyrics because I know the song's quite well known and some of them might well know it already yeah. and think oh we don't need the music yes. but actually having the music will show them where they're not singing as well as where they are singing yeah so on the music yeah. um it's written with with small notes um to show that it's a cue uh to show that they don't sing that part they just yeah. wait wait for Andy to sing that and then yeah. come back in afterwards yeah um okay. yes and then after we've done the recordings then we're going to have another recording session aren't we for the for the actual video bit that's right isn't it yes so once we've got all those recordings in then we will have uh, some more zoom uh, sessions for uh, one for each part and we're going to record those sessions and then use that video so you're going to sort of sing along but we won't use the audio from that because it's not very good and you've already sent it in um, so we will be using the visuals from that and then editing them together to make the final result. Yeah, and there's a time limit on this because obviously we want to try and maximise on the time that you've got while you're not at school. Um, so we're hoping to have all of this done by, um, is it two weeks today? Is that right? You find the date? Yeah, I think so. So we think most schools go back on something like the 14th of April around then so we'd like the deadline to have all your audio recordings back to us is Friday April the 17th which is two weeks today as it is um, anything received after this date um, sadly we won't be in a position to accept because we'll go, be going on to the next stage so if you really do want to be involved um, you've got um, a, a few a good week and a half to get that done following um the rehearsals next week yeah so so we're <laughs> so again right. so we're looking forward to uh, hearing what you can do um really exciting it's as i put in um an email before we haven't done anything like this before it's brand new for us so we want to make the best of the of the resources we have so please don't rush into anything please follow matt's guidance and uh, also remember the rehearsals the online rehearsals next week because once we've all had a look at the music together things become a lot easier uh and so get those dates in your diary for next week Super. Yeah, look forward, really look forward to, to starting to receive those recordings and starting to put them together um, okay. for our very first virtual choir, county yeah, choir it's virtual really choir exciting. performance, isn't it? Really exciting. Super. Okay, so right. look, see you again soon. Okay. Bye. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye.